Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a doctor. I'm going to summarise a book for you. You're not your brain. The four-step solution for changing bad habits, ending unhealthy thinking and taking control of your life by Jeffrey M. Schwartz and Rebecca Gladden. The key point is separating the sense of self, your mind, from the deceptive brain messages that you're sent. The book begins by teaching you what deceptive brain messages are and helps you identify the ones that are bothering you and impairing you in some way. The mind can powerfully and unexpectedly change the brain in positive ways when you're intentionally directing your attention. To understand negative thoughts, we have to realise how highly deceptive intruders these can be. A, a, a negative thought can be an, almost like an intruder coming from your brain. And this is not from you. These can be false messages and they're not indicative of who you are or about your life and how you're leading it. So really, you need to get that crucial distinction between you and the symptoms that your brain is perhaps trying to tell you to experience. Some methods teach you how to change the meaning of your thoughts, such as CPT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, or mindfulness, but they don't actually tell you that these brain-based messages are not representative of who you really are and you do not have to act on them. The book recommends four steps to reframing and improving your brain process. Firstly, relabel. You identify your deceptive brain messages that are causing uncomfortable sens sensations and call them what they really are. The second is to reframe. Change your perception of the importance of these deceptive messages. Say why these thoughts, urges and impulses keep bothering you. These are false brain messages. It is not me, it is my brain. Third is to refocus. Redirect your attention on activity or the mental process onto wholesome, productive things. Even while you're getting false and deceptive brain thoughts and impulses, realize that you should focus on productive things. The final step four is to revalue. Clearly see the thoughts, urges and impulses for what they are. Simply sensations caused by your brain and they're not your true self. When you focus your attention, it will influence how your brain is actually wired. This means if you keep repeating the same things over and over, regardless of what the action is, whether it's positive or negative, your brain gets circuits associated with that and it becomes stronger and more powerful the urge to do these things. In essence, if you're indulging in things out of a kind of habitual response, you may find temporary relief or pleasure from these, but they'll create stronger and stronger enduring patterns urging you to have the same behavior. And with considerable effort, you can change these. Emotions. Emotions should be felt and constructively dealt with because they do harbour your true needs. Whereas emotional sensations that arrive from your arise from your brain can be relabeled, reframed using the four steps that I've, I've explained. One of the things you may think is, well, what is a deceptive brain message? It's something that is not congruent with your goals. 
I liked how it explained a couple of laws or things which are concepts widely known but puts a name to it. So Hibbs law is neurons that fire together, wire together. Whereas the quantum Zeno effect is that focused attention holds together and stabilizes brain circuits. So when you combine the quantum Zeno effect with Hebb's law, it really does show you how, if you can focus your attention, it can help you. This book suggests that sometimes other people will disagree with you, they'll disappoint you, they'll act inappropriately towards you. But the main thing is, this may not be because of you. See, we get caught up in endless thought streams and things that go by therefore unnoticed because we're thinking too much about sometimes the wrong things. When we're engrossed in an activity, we actually uh, are potentially punishing ourselves by focusing on the wrong thing. So when you're going to be considering how you want to spend your thought process, think of your true emotions and values and do that accordingly. Mindfulness, you'll hear a lot about that, and that's living in the moment and appreciating the moment for what it is. But it's actually an activity, it's not a state of mind. And when you actually think back and buy into the concepts of deceptive brain messages unintentionally, you can then overanalyze social situations about how you should respond in future. And your brain will continue to overanalyze these things, meaning that you're caught in a vicious circle in which your future happiness may be diminished. So, Whenever you have these uh, deceptive brain messages, try to filter them out and maximise both your contributions to a conversation or what's happening and others' con contributions. And this can really be beneficial to everybody. The book mentions the five A's. These are attention, affection, appreciation, allowing and acceptance. And acceptance includes the acknowledging, the acknowledgement of these deceptive brain messages and sensations for what they are, but simply allowing you to realize they're present, but you don't have to act on them at all. Thinking errors are explained in a fair bit of detail in this book. Some you'll have heard of, so this would be like black and white thinking, or perhaps catastrophizing, and fortune telling, discounting the positive. Don't do these things. They're, they're called thinking errors for a reason. The concept of a wise advocate is outlined. This is really your ally, and it can be anybody who really helps you act in the genuine best way for your interest and others around you. So it empowers yourself to be loving and caring. So listen to your wise advocates, whoever they are, and they'll help you um, grow and develop your true self. Your true self really is a state of mind that enables you to live the best life you can. Revaluing helps strengthen your healthy messages, which enable you to align with your actions with your true self. So refocus with progressive mindfulness and it'll help you engage in the world following the path of your true self. Hope you've enjoyed that. Feel free to comment below, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.